So there are many different ways to change your brush settings here inside ZBrush, but in this video I'd like to talk about some of the most common uses of affecting your brush and how it affects your surface as you sculpt and paint. I'm going to change my material so you can see the red cursor a bit better. So the first thing that I want to talk about is draw size, which you can see up here at the top. My default draw size is set to 67. And you can see that my cursor has a certain size on the model. I'm going to press the letter X to turn off symmetry for a moment. If I take this draw size up, you can see that that cursor changes in size. A keyboard shortcut that will let you interactively change your cursor on the model is the letter S. So I'll press the letter S once, and then I get this slider right where my cursor is that can interactively change the draw size really convenient way of sculpting on your model and then quickly changing your draw size. As I'm done, that slider will disappear. Let's divide our model a few times. Control D, Control D, and one more time. Just add a few subdivision levels. I'll press the letter S to take my draw size down. Sculpt on the model. Press the letter S, bring my draw size up, and sculpt on the model. So that's pretty clear. I'll undo those, Control Z, Control Z. Above your draw size is your focal shift. You notice that your cursor is made up of two circles, an inner and an outer red circle. If I adjust the focal shift, the inner circle is gonna adjust in size. And what this does is change the fall off of your brush. So for instance, if I take my focal shift down to a negative value, you can see those two circles are very close together. We get a very harsh edge as we sculpt on the model. If I take my focal shift higher in a positive value, you can see the inner circle becomes much smaller. And we get a much finer fall off or softer fall off between the two circles. I'll undo those. Over here next to draw size, we have Z intensity. You can think of Z intensity as the strength of your brush, how much it's either going to push or pull in the surface. So by default, my Z intensity right now is set to 32. And as I press on the tablet here and draw along the surface, I get this type of stroke. If I take my Z intensity down, I'll obviously have to push a little bit harder and stroke along the surface several times before I start getting the same type of result. Much softer brush to work with. I take the Z intensity all the way up to 100. Obviously, we'll get a very strong stroke along the surface. I'll undo those, control Z, control Z, control Z. Above Z intensity, we have Z add and Z sub. When you're in Z add, you'll be pulling out along the surface. And when you're in Z sub, you'll be pushing in on the surface. Now often while working, you won't actually come up here and press these buttons Z add and Z sub. It's very likely that you'll keep it to one of the two, usually Z add. And as you're sculpting along your surface, if you want to switch to Z sub or switch to the opposite of what you're doing, you can press the Alt key. So even in the same stroke, you can let go of Alt and then press Alt and start pushing in. And I'll let go of Alt and start pulling out. If we take a look next to the Z add and Z sub, we have a few buttons here, MRGB, RGB, and M. Now what do these stand for? Well, M stands for material, all of these things that you see here in the material pop up, and RGB stands for color, what you'd see here in the color picker. And then we have M by itself. So this button will allow you to paint with material and color this button will let you paint with just color and this button will let you paint with just material. Now below these three we have our RGB slider which will affect the strength in which we're painting color and material into the surface of our model. Now we're not going to get into painting color and material in this video because in a few videos down the road I'll explain specifically how to poly paint your model and convert those to textures. But for right now I just want you to know that this stands for material and color, just color, 
material and then the slider below this will obviously affect the strength of the color and material that you're painting into the surface. One last thing that I'd like to point out is that the settings that we've been working with and discussing are local to each specific brush. So what I mean by that, if you go into the brush pop-up, you can see that there are many different brushes that you can use here inside ZBrush. And as I switch to each individual brush, these settings will change to their default values. So for instance, right now I'm on the standard brush. I'll take the standard brush intensity up to 100%. I'll press the letter B to open up my brush pop-up. And then I'll press the letter C so I can isolate all the brushes with the letter C. And I'll click on clay tubes. Now when I do this, you'll see that my Z intensity will go from the 100% that I set for the standard brush down to the default intensity of the clay tubes. So if I set my clay tubes down to 11 or 12, I can hit the letter B to open up the brush pop-up, the letter S, T for standard, and you can see now my intensity went back up to 100%. So I'll hit the letter B for my brush pop-up, C for clay, click on the clay tubes, and now I'm back to 12. So whatever adjustments you make on that specific brush will stick with that brush. And then when you switch to another one, those settings will change up here at the top. Just important to know so when you're switching between each individual brush, you're not confused as to why your settings are always changing.